Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. Now, let's allow you to see me a little better. <laughs> I can't hear. How's that? Good. Good. Where are you calling from? California. California. <laughs> Jealous. Gabriella, where are you calling from? The same place, California. California. Uh, which university? Cal State LA. Cal State LA. Uh, can I get an invitation to Cal State LA? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Send an email to your um, to your administration. I would love a trip to California. <laughs> oh yeah, and I would like to talk to you too. To you too as well. Where are you from? Where are you? Um, I'm a, actually I'm from Dallas, Texas, um, but we are now in Michigan. That's pretty different. Oh yeah. Ah, better. Yeah, um, big difference. <laughs> Only been to California once. Um, I uh, went to San Diego. Good spot. All right. So, uh, what are your majors? Biology. Biology. Same. All right. What are you planning on doing with it? Trying, we're both trying to get our uh, PhDs, so we're applying to PhD programs this year. Okay. Are you um, are you planning to use your PhD to do research and teach, or be a professor? Professors, perfect, perfect. Yeah, we're all we're both working on our personal statements right now. Okay. For schools. I think that's actually one of the, um, that's going to be one of the subject matters. Oh, very cool. If we're hoping so. Very cool. Um, either of you coming to the LSMC conference this year? I applied for a scholarship, but I don't know if I got it. Hmm. I'll ask Deb when, when people find that out. Is that a, on the 29th or something like that? I think it's soon. I think it's this one. Soon? Okay. And I'll be right back. <laughs> Grab a glass of water. Actually, if you have your chat feature, could you go ahead and put your name? Uh, let's see what you have to type. So I don't get in trouble. Mm -hmm. So it's name, college, and email. Name, college, and email. And while you're doing that, I'm going to fix something.
Alright. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and get my screen shared. I yep, we have um few students who have began um, typing their institution. Fantastic. Thank you, everybody. I really appreciate that. Guys, tell me how well you can see my screen. Well, looks good. Mm -hmm. All right. Tomorrow's meeting is at three, right? Second meeting.
Hello, Danielle. Hi. Where are you calling from? Um, I'm from Marion University. Marion University. If you can put your name, university, and email in the chat box, Danielle. Okay. We lost Gabriella. Where did she go? And you said my name, my university, and what else? And uh, email address. Give me one second here. All right. We're, we are going to start in two minutes. Um, usually give a little grace period. I know a lot of people dial in <laughs> at the time, and then you struggle with trying to log in. Uh, Candace or Danielle, you have any issues logging in? Uh, no, mine was fine. Okay. I had to, my laptop died on me, but <laughs> that wasn't really an issue with the chat. Right. Well, let's get started tonight. Uh, tonight's uh, call is going to be on um, a very interesting subject matter. Um, it's going to be on personal branding, but uh, before we get into that, uh, we just want to kind of highlight uh, what our overall purpose is, and it's to um, to give you some practical skills and techniques on this journey you guys are on uh, to help you be more successful, more productive, more effective. Um, and it goes across different spectrums. So this is uh, in school, uh, with your academics, in your professional career, uh, which sometimes uh, for us, academics and professional crossover, um, and then also in your personal life. Um, so like we said tonight, it's uh, personal brand management, and it's about telling your your story and your brand. And I think that uh, many times in school, uh, we're not really uh, focused on our brand, right? Uh, it's about making the grades, it's about uh, progressing, and it's about getting uh, the bachelor's, getting the master's, getting the PhD, um, getting the tenure position at the university. Uh, it's about these milestones and we forget on that process sometimes that we have a story, uh, we have a brand, we have a personality that we can convey. And so today, uh, we're just going to talk about some different skills and techniques um, that you can use uh, to help build your brand. Because I believe so far, I know Candace is going to be uh, a professor. And Danielle, what, what interest do you have? Uh, like career-wise? 
Yes. Right. Um, uh, right now, I'm like going back and forth between either being like a physician assistant or um, trying to go for like actual physician and emergency medicine. Okay. Those are the goals. And then one day you're going to write a book about it. <laughs> and then have your own television show about emergency medicine. Right? <laughs> With guest, with guest speaker, um, Dr. Dr. Limper uh, from California will be your guest speaker on your show. That'd be fun. All right. So just real quick, I mean, you guys saw my profile. It's really not, we're not going to go too deep into that. So we'll progress tonight. All right. So this week we're going to do a little icebreaker um, and it's going to be called Name That Brand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably have one or two, maybe even three words. And with just those two or three words, I want you to tell me uh, what you think uh, this brand is. Apple, Windows. Apple, great job. All right, here we go. Kellogg's. <laughs> Great job. So um, the reason that we chose this as an icebreaker, one, to kind of loosen us up, get us talking tonight. Two is the fact that with two words and then with three words, you were able to identify a brand. Um, and it's not like these are the only brands in those spaces. You could have said General Mills, right? You could have said, um, like you said, Microsoft. You could have said all kind of items, but these are the people who have branded themselves so well that when you say two or three words, they are what come to your mind. Now, because we don't have a physical brand like this, we are the brand. Every interaction you have with someone, um, everything that you, every publication you have, every paper you write, um, all of these things are, are your opportunities to uh, promote your brand um, and develop your brand. All right. So, um, who knows what this seven seconds means? Is it the elevator thing? You have seven seconds to pitch something in the elevator. All right, seven seconds to make a first impression. So we're going to play a little game with you. All right, let's see, let's see how we do. But what's going to happen is I'm going to have a brand that comes up. And when the brand comes up, I want you to just shout out as many things uh, that come to your mind as it pertains to that brand. Okay, here we go. Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. Okay, we're gonna. Oh, no. <laughs> hey, but it's Michael Jordan, so it's like you got it right. <laughs> These are just some things I'm throwing up there. Here we go. Here's another one. Bye. Like Manila. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. One more. Cheap. Greasy. Greasy and cheap. <laughs> Fast, fun, value menu. So one of the things that this little exercise does for us is it kind of proves that the seven seconds works, right? You really don't need that long of a period of time to, to build um, an understanding of something. And one of the beauties about what we just did was, if you noticed, when Chipotle came up, someone said, what do you say, like average or, what was the statement? Salmonella. Yeah, oh no. <laughs> the Salmonella, the Listeria outbreak. Uh, I, think so they've, I think they've overcome that in California now, right? Haven't they? I think it's happened a couple of times. Oh no. Yeah. But you had an opinion, right? Um, have you ever been to Chipotle? Mm -hmm. Does it does it taste good to you? Yeah, it tastes good. It tastes really but good. Think about that. It tastes good to you, 
But the first thing that comes to your mind right now is the outbreak. Mm -hmm. Because of how fragile a brand is. When I used to, um, when I used to work um, with Kellogg, they would say, um, that your reputation is as fragile as a cornflake. And it really is. And we're going to talk about a little bit later about how fragile our brands really are. So, uh, Danielle, can you read this for me? Sure. Um, professional branding describes the process by which individuals and entrepreneurs differentiate themselves and stand out from a crowd by identifying and articulating their unique value proposition, whether professional or personal, and then leveraging it across platforms with a consistent message and image to achieve a specific goal. All right, so when we think about a brand, I don't want you guys to think like, oh man, you know, I'm just trying to promote myself and make myself look good. It's really about just differentiating yourself. You know, each of you are gonna go into your careers, you're gonna go into your, uh, your different business ventures and, and different things in life, and all we're trying to do is differentiate ourselves as you're trying to achieve your greatness. So, um, Candace, if you become a professor, you know, and, and you're doing some research, you really, you, your goal is to be in the top of your field, correct? Mm -hmm. And so to be in the top of your field, you have to differentiate yourself. Um, once you understand how to differentiate yourself, now you want to leverage that across different platforms and you want it to be as consistent as possible. So if Deb uh, and the LSMCE organization receives a phone call about Brian Thomas and Kip Inspire. If a university I traveled to and spoke to uh, calls and says, hey, how, how have your interactions been with Brian Thomas? That they're consistent. Mm -hmm. And the more consistent they are, that's when people trust you. You know, uh, think about Starbucks and think about McDonald's. They're on every corner, it seems like, in America. And one of the reasons that it works is because when you go to these establishments, you know what you're going to get. How many times have you gone to like a, um, uh, for us, we have Walmart and we have a store called Myers. In California, what is uh, one of your kind of big, big stores like that you have? Target. Like a Target? Okay. Have you ever gone to a Target? but the Target had a different layout of the store and it frustrated you than the typical layout? Have you ever gone to a store and you're like, oh, it's, it's JCPenney or it's so-and-so, and then all of a sudden you get inside and the layout of the store is different? Mm -hmm. And that's about the consistency piece. We really want to be consistent so people don't ever get frustrated about our brand. All right. Any questions on that? Okay, so this next one is going to be um, something that's fun because I think I'm going to get you. It's, I've, I've never had anyone figure this out before. If you figure this out, you're the smartest students I've ever ran across. Here we go. You ready? All right, Carl John has four functions of the mind. We're going to work through these four functions. What is the first function? Sure. <laughs> Give it one guess. I want to say genius, but it's not the right word. And, That's what I said. And I'm pretty, sure, I'm pretty sure you're also thinking about Genesis. Yeah. <laughs> it's neither one. It's not you. Insane. Is that one intuition? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. What's the next one then? The last one's feeling. Thinking? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so something very, there's two, two things that's important about this. The very first thing is this. When someone meets you, when you have an interaction with them, when your brand is uh, being critiqued, there's a sense 
there's an intuition, there's a thought, and then there's a feeling that takes place. And mm -hmm. in that process, that is how they're developing their what? Perceived value. Through that process, they are developing a perceived value of you. And that sounds kind of, it's like, man, somebody's doing that in such a short period of time. Absolutely. We do it to each other all day. Right? That's, why, that's how our brain is processing. Now, with that being said, there's another very interesting thing that happened. And it always happens to your brain when I, when I present this slide. And I presented the slides like this. I kind of put my cursor here on the sensing. You had no idea what this was, and it, all of this kind of seemed confusing. But as soon as I provided sensing in its clear and appropriate state, all of the other ones started to seem like they made a little bit more sense, right? And so that's kind of the, something I want you to think about your brand is when you present yourself appropriately, say, for instance, I went into a job interview. And on the job interview, um, I walked in and I wasn't dressed appropriately. My hair was a mess. My makeup, you know, I forgot to do my makeup that day, and I'm just looking up. I'm looking crazy, right? Mm -hmm. And do you think they're going to give me a chance to try to find out about me that much? Not really. That's, that's what this looks like. There, all of all of the good things about you are looking like this. Why? Because this is the way you presented yourself. But when you present yourself well, you, you maybe wake up, you comb your hair, you, you, you have nice perfume, you, you practice, you look very professional, you look very confident. Now, all of a sudden, these other things start to look clearer about you, and people want to look deeper and understand more about you. So it was just one of those things about that first introduction, when you present yourself like Genesis or Genius, when you're really sensing people get a false interpretation of who you really are. And so it's very critical that you think about your brand um, while you're on your college campuses. This is a great opportunity to practice. Like you, you have a chance to mold your brand. You don't have to have a perfect brand today. Um, Deb uh, and the LSMTE team, they've seen me evolve over the last few years. My brand is a much more uh, seasoned and more professional and more prepared uh, for for larger audience brand than when I first started because I was a rookie and I just they gave me an opportunity right they have seen that evolution of me and so it can change you know but the thing is you got to put something out there right and the reason that it's important to put something out there is if you do not put a brand out there someone's going to develop an opinion about you so if they're already going to develop an opinion, you might as well give them something to develop it about. You put the brand out there. All right. So one other thing we talked about, you guys used the Chipotle um, uh, an example. And it's about loyalty, um, loyal customers' feedback. The statistics are crazy that People actually, think about it this way. You said the Chipotle outbreak. But how many times have you gone to Chipotle and had a delicious meal? Mm -hmm. uh, Great, uh, you know, a number of times. Mm -hmm. But the one bad experience that you have is the one that you usually publicize and remember the most. And that's, it's crazy that that's the way the mind does it. But not many times, maybe I go to my favorite restaurant 49 times, and the food is delicious. But then I go to that restaurant one time, and the waiter or waitress treats me terrible. The food is terrible. It's likely I'm going on social media, and I'm just going to put them on blast. And I'm going to talk about them on social media. When the 49 times that they treated me well, I didn't say a single word. And so it's because we now know that, it's not like we can change it, right? We can't change other people's opinions. But because we know that, it makes us even more critical about protecting our brand. Making sure that, that we're doing well. Okay. Any, any questions on anything we talked about so far? 
any insightful? Has anything been a little insightful so far? Okay. All right. So let's keep it moving. So some people wonder with their brand, they wonder like, what is, like, what is my brand? <laughs> what does that mean? How do you know what your brand is? I see both of you like shaking your head like, yeah, what does that mean? So we're not going to get too fancy. I'm just going to throw a couple items up here. And I want to know if you kind of look at this list and think about how you fit inside of some of these categories. Would this help shape your brand? Like, how do you fit? Like, what special skills do you have, Danielle? You know, you want to be in emergency, in emergency medicine. Like, is there something that, is there an energy you bring? Is there, like, man, emergency? Like, I really like things fast-paced. I like my, my blood pumping, and I like to be on the spot. Like, what is that? Yeah. I always like it when it's a lot of variety types of um, if it's the same thing every day, it's I get bored kind of easily. Um, like on the screen, like I I like to think I have a positive attitude. I go with the flow pretty well. So so for you, Danielle, it may not be as much about like you want to be a visionary. Like you want to sit back and and have these deep sessions of thought. You want to just like go. Yeah. Right. So when you're building your brand and you, and people are like Danielle, it's like spontaneous. Like if there was a an event and you had maybe like an hour to prepare for it, just like the person mm -hmm. would do it. Now, Candice, I don't know. Candice, are you the type of person that if I told you in thirty minutes we're going somewhere, you're like, hey, let's let's rock and roll. I probably wouldn't be down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I need more time. <laughs> Candace may need more time because you may be, because you, I, I know you want to be a professor, Candace. You may be more in the world of the visionary. You may want to think about the ideas. Am I, am I right or wrong? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. You know, and, and it doesn't make us right or wrong. None of these is right or wrong. It's just who we are and how we're made up. Right. Somehow I was designed in such a way that I think it's cool on a Wednesday night to do a virtual learning session. Like this is pretty neat to me mm -hmm. because I'm full of energy. I have passion for education and I have a unique set of skills. My special skills isn't really um, something that I can kind of put my hand on. Mine is like I have an ability to take a very large amount of information and a range of experiences and bring them together and explain them in a very simplistic way right? and so that's that's kind of my brand that's who i am but hopefully you know some of these items will help you kind of shape shape your brand and, and there's, there's probably more i just thought these were some really simple ones to kind of help you think about yourself and and, and when you do this and people get your business cards, people look at a website, people look at your publications, these things should come out. Like that should pop out of your everything you do. So if you're like, hey, I'm a visionary. Well, almost everything you do should come out as like, wow, this, this girl's really a visionary. And sometimes it gets so deep, guys that it goes all to all the way into like your attire and how mm -hmm. you dress. You know, your if you look think about it, that's the reason why we have brands and clothes. <laughs> that's the whole point, right? And mm -hmm. and so I'm not I don't know math and science sometimes we I don't think we think of ourselves that way, but I did and that's why a few years ago I decided to do this. Learning professional development skills, but I'm a STEM guy. But what we're learning today is really not about STEM. This can cross any platform. Uh, any student in your university could be learning from this. You know, so really think outside of the box with your brand as well. Yeah, you don't have to limit yourself. All right, so now the social media impact. 
So last call, um, I learned a lot about different social media platforms. I think I'm now on them all, except I'm not so good at Snapchat. <laughs> Who can teach me? <laughs> no, I'm really good on Instagram now. I'm getting much better, but the Snapchat, I'm kind of struggling. Let's see if I can, I'll, I'll Snapchat myself doing a virtual learning session. Um, so, pros. Give me a couple pros for, for social media. Connected. Connected. Very accessible. Very accessible. Give me another one. Free. Free. All mm -hmm. right, let's see. Connected, accessible, free, visible, networking, fun, laugh, play games. Does anyone on here other than me get invited to play Candy Crush every day? Or <laughs> I'm probably the one sending you the invite. <laughs> All right, so those are the pros. Now, give me some cons. What are some of the cons to the social media impact on your brand? Probably visibility. What was that? Visibility. Like, all the good stuff is visible, but also, like, the not so, like, professional, like, the more casual you that you might not want to have being seen by your work. Mm. So let's see what we got here. All that though. Ooh, the cons, the bad language, the inappropriate jokes, the, the inappropriate games and pictures and people losing their jobs and being removed from school. That's kind of harsh stuff I wrote on there, right? Right. It's, but it's reality, though. How many people here know that their student code of conduct also includes social media? Mm -hmm. No? Anyone? I've glanced at the, the social conduct. I don't. Not something I retain very well. And you signed it, right? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I don't know if it's becoming more and more of a thing, but I can tell you that on some of, in some of our professional schools on the Indiana University of Purdue University campus and in some of the graduate programs, that um, student code of conduct now does include social media, and there have been instances where where students were uh, taken out of the program. I know that you can block. Your social, I know at least on Facebook, so that nobody can see it unless you're friends. I mean, assuming you'd only add your like non professional friends. Right, exactly. Yeah. And there's also like different levels, like you can do like friends but not acquaintances, or like close friends and family but not friends, stuff like that. Yeah, and I would, I would say to that, uh, definitely if you can kind of understand those different levels. But also, consider this. Even if I share it with a friend, all I need to do is find a friend. <laughs> so I don't even have to be friends of yours to find yeah. stuff about you. All I need to do is be a friend of your friend. Mm -hmm. And it, what if your friends aren't protected? Mm -hmm. You know, and so really overall, the overall theme is just be appropriate. You know, I won't even... You know, you, you kind of look at the word inappropriate, right? Just think about whatever you're doing, be appropriate. Um, the challenge that we face these days is a lot of, there's like a lot of political commentary and everybody wants to give their opinion and like a, a news anchor, like when you go into the social media and it's okay, right? Um, but if you go to my page and a lot of people may say, hey, Brian, well, you know, you're not, you're not confident and you're not bold and... All I'm, all I'm saying is this, if you want my opinion, I'll have a conversation with you about my opinion. And I'm only gonna give it to you if I want to give it to you. Something that I can choose or not to give you. On social media, I haven't been called in my heart or emotion to go and give any social commentary on some of the events and political things that happen. That just doesn't, for me, that's not the platform that I want to, that I choose to because it puts it in such a format that it can be misinterpreted so easy. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I can have great intentions, right? I can have these great intentions and then mess around and type one word incorrectly and 
because I'm from I'm from Texas and I live in Michigan and and, and you ladies are in California maybe the way of life is different and you interpret what I said inappropriately and now I lose my ability to do the virtual learning sessions and I hurt my brand and I hurt the ability to do business with with you guys moving forward all over me putting one Facebook post inappropriately it's like wow is it really worth it and to me it's not so I choose to stay away from that and like I said everything and this is just a I don't want to feel like preaching, but this is a statement I want to make sure I give to, to college. Everything that happens in the world and everything that you see doesn't require your opinion. Not everything. <laughs> you know, sometimes, oof, that works. <laughs> All right. So, who has a website? Come on, we need a website. Excuse me. So tell me, have you ever even thought about having your own website? Is it, do you mean like a LinkedIn profile kind of thing? I mean a website called www.danielle the emergency medicine specialist dot com. Mm -hmm. Nope. I've never thought about it before. Candace, Doctor. Dr. Limper, visionary.com. <laughs> so, one of the things that I want you to think about right now is while you're in college, your brand begins now. Your story is now. The impact that you can make on other people's lives is right now. People need to know. You ladies are doing special things and you're about to go change the world. And we need to know that journey. We need to understand your story. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to go into overkill and post like, hey, I woke up this morning. Hey, <laughs> my teeth. You know, you don't have to go crazy like some of the celebrities. But there's somebody that can be motivated by you. There's somebody that wants to give you an opportunity that maybe that you know, network with. But if you don't expose those things, people don't know. A website as a college student is a great tool. Uh, and it shows, uh, what do we say at the beginning? We want to differentiate ourselves from the competition, right? So, Candace, as you're developing your personal statement for the PhD program, and you say, hey, on your application, visit my website, Candace Limper, uh, PhD is my goal.com you know <laughs> that looks very interesting to a, to a person that's critiquing your your application it's something different mm -hmm. you know i love biology candace limper biology you know mm -hmm. danielle emergency is the name of my game.com you know uh so what is your interest so like we you kind of hear what i keep repeating is i'm repeating you guys interest what are you striving to be? I'm striving to be the emergency medicine leader. I'm striving to be the best biologist in the world in my space because uh, usually you're going to have a niche that you mm -hmm. be. What experience do you have? Um, you know, get a couple professional photos. You know, make yourself look nice. If you go to my website, I got a couple pictures. Hey, smiling, different things. You know. Um, what about a photo of, of, of your of your school, your your activities? You know, maybe you did a summer internship, maybe um, any of your extracurricular activities, just to showcase to people that you do have a life beyond just the classroom. You know, because people do want to see that you're well rounded. Mm -hmm. Now you don't have to show them, you know, a picture of you at the club. You know, <laughs> you know, make sure that it's a picture of you. You know. Uh, appropriate remember our social media appropriate pictures and then also uh, links to your social media sites so how many of you are comfortable if I had if I had the ability to go on your, every one of your social media sites right now mm. Mm. so we got to tighten that up because we want that to be a yes why because you guys are going to be excellent at what you do, which means people are going to want to know who you are. Now, 
LinkedIn. Everybody has their LinkedIn profile, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm on Danielle. We're going to get it. Homework, homework. Mm -hmm. So let's get that LinkedIn while you're in college, okay? It's going to help you when you start uh, looking for jobs. People are recruiting. I, um, I, part of, uh, you're going to see if anybody makes it uh, to the LSMCE conference, my first seven slides for my presentation on Saturday morning are going to blow your mind. They're going to blow your mind, and they're the exact same slides. Different message in each one. And all I do is show you messages that come to me because people have found me. And you'll be as shocked at what they're offering me. <laughs> they're appropriate. These are good things. But because I presented myself, I have my professional resume online. There's millions of people out there who are just like going through these sites looking for people. It's one of the number one recruiting tools in the world now. It's just like really changed the whole recruiting game as it pertains to universities and jobs. All right. Now, the other one is for, for us in the STEM world. Projects, pub publications, products. You want on your website, you can have links, different sites, right, that you've been published on. Maybe it's a link uh, to a magazine. Uh, maybe it's a link to the LSMCE uh, website who maybe did a spotlight feature on you. You know, it could be a cornerstone project that you did for one of your courses. Mm -hmm. Yep. So now, because the website, some people think that it's like, well, how can I afford that, right? Like, that sounds expensive. $10 doesn't sound so bad, does it? Netflix costs more than that. <laughs> So now, now Deb and I talked before, and I'm happy she gave me this feedback. Which would, you know, these days there's different tools that you can use. You don't actually have to have a website. Um, they have things called lead pages, uh, which is like almost like a like a one. It's like one page. You know, it's not really like a website where you have the multiple pages. It's really like a header. Um, but there's other options that are out there that are beyond just a website. But I just wanted to highlight that a domain name, you know, the more creative you are with a domain name, usually the cheaper it is because people don't own it. Uh, there's actually a business where people buy the domain names and they then you have to buy it from them. So if you do something like uh, DanielleEmergencyMedicine.com, it's probably no one has that. You know, it's a, it's a good possibility. So when I did my company, uh, Knowledge is Power, Inspiration, so Kip Inspire, people, no one owned that. That was so different. It was unique. Mm -hmm. And you can use GoDaddy.com. You can use uh, Domain.com. These are just a couple of the websites uh, that can help teach you and guide you through website uh, acquisition and development. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, our business cards, business cards. Who has them? I Come on, Danielle. We got to get those business cards. All right, here we go. We're going to learn a little bit. We need a nice professional photo. Candace, do you have your face on there? Come on, Candace. We need to see that smile. We need the smile. All right. A professional email. We don't need um, I love to play baseball at gmail.com. I love, um, you know, I don't know, a television show. I love watching scandal.com at gmail.com. We need your professional email, your name, or just something professional. Um, I've, I've actually worked my entire career without my name being my email. Now, at work, at my professional in corporate America, yes. But from a business standpoint, I've actually never used my name, um, which is ironic. But because it's a professional email, it still works. So the, co the, the key is just professional. Also, professional social media. So make sure that uh, your LinkedIn maybe is on there and, and places that you want people to go that you're 
uh, okay with. Precise statement about you. So your business card is kind of small, right? There's not a lot you can put on there. But you can put like a quick sentence or a quick few words to just highlight who you are. So for me, it may say something like speaker, author, corporate leader. You know, and in those few words, it encapsulates who I am. So you may say, Danielle, um, emergency medicine pioneer, <laughs> right? And in just a few words, like, wow, I see that on a business card. It's like, what is this? What is, who is this? Who, who wants to be an emergency medicine pioneer? Ah, something different, right? Because the goal is we want to remember you. We want to be remembered. That's what the brand is about. When I leave an interaction with you, do I still think about you? When I, you leave that restaurant, what's your favorite restaurant, Candace? Uh, Taco Bell. Taco Bell. Oh, we have a good, what is it? You like chalupas? Uh, bean and cheese burritos. Bean and cheese burrito. Now, now Candace, tell me. When you have just the, I mean, they make that bean and cheese burrito just perfect. Do you sometimes, like, you eat it and then, like, you think about it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, like this wow, is really they, good. this is really good. Like, they really made this special for me today. Mm -hmm. it's, it's no different than our interactions, guys. I choose food because food, food has a way of touching our hearts, right? And so... It's no different. I, I, I always say this. Um, I had a friend that was telling me about my book, so I just finished my book, right? And I told him, I said, I don't know if my book is going to climb the charts, but I do know it can climb some hearts, right? And so my goal isn't to, to sell a million books. My, soul, my goal is to impact a few lives, you know, and, and leave a positive imprint on the world. So when you think about these two, the, the personal website and the business card, show your professional side, show your fun side, but at the end of the day, show the impact that you want to leave in the world. And once again, look at the prices. Not so bad. But if you call in the next uh, 30 minutes, you get a low, low discount of... 20% off and free shipping. Mm -hmm. And this is real. Like um, the LSMCE organization has uh, actually put this discount in. So all you have to do is go to vistaprint.com and put in the promo code first order, and that's all caps first, F I R S T O R D E R, and you will get 20% uh, off and free shipping. So I believe where it says the two fifty is down to nine ninety nine, it drops it all the way down to like six dollars, maybe six ninety nine or so, and that can go a long way. And you may wonder, like, man, I need more than two fifty. Actually, as a college student, two hundred and fifty business cards is a good quantity. That's a nice. That's a nice quantity. That may last you the whole school year. You know, you may take like twenty or thirty with you at each conference, you know, but one of the things I, I do want to give you a little tip here about the business cards at conferences, always take all of them, take them all, take more than you need. And the reason I say that you just never know mm -hmm. <laughs> so with business cards, you can never have too many, you know, there's, you can't have too many. All right. So now it's elevator pitch time. So, this elevator pitch is one, as you can see, I created back in 2014, and I do have this one. This is the exact one that I have in the book. This is simple. You don't have to be too fancy about your elevator pitch. Now, you can take this, and then you can make this into your own, but this kind of is a really, this to me is a really good blueprint into how to pitch yourself. 
Um, we will have this converted over to a PDF. And um, I know LSMCE is going to work on trying to get these out. I know this is uh, one of the ones we probably should just make a, a handout or something for this one. I think I, I actually have a handout available. Maybe I can provide. But this is one that really helps. Uh, what I typically do at my workshops is I will have students practice this. And it's shocking that um, even the adults I work with, we struggle with this. <laughs> you know, we can do, you can do like microbiology, but we can't, we can't say, hello, my name is. <laughs> and it's true. You guys are laughing because it's so true. And it's even worse for some of us in the STEM field because we just really get so deep into our, our field and sometimes it's hard for us to come out, right? And so if you think about your brand, your brand is about being creative and unique. And so that's where I came from with, with creating my brand. I identified that you guys needed this. You had a gap. There was a person in this STEM field that was missing, that's bringing this energy, that's bringing this professionalism, and hey, here comes this crazy guy who has climbed the ranks in corporate America. Guess what, I love STEM, right? And so I said, I wanna be the person to fill that gap, and that's my brand, mm -hmm. you know? And so when you see me, you see this, and you're like, hey, this guy is a teacher and all this. Yeah, I do this also. I also run a $90 million operation in corporate America. So you can have your brand is about finding gaps. So Candace, when you go into your PhD program and you start getting very specific in your study, think about like, wow, has anybody tried this? And when you identify that gap, that can become where your brand is developed. You know, and you think about our technology companies, they wanted to write, really push the envelope, be so innovative, cutting edge and change the world. That was a gap. Why? Because people were simple minded. They didn't see big, but these rare individuals saw the big picture and they pushed the envelope. So Danielle, on the emergency medicine side, think about the gaps that you see. Like, wow, why don't they do this? You know, why don't we have iPads and, you know, why don't they put a little more technology? That's, that's your brand. All right. You got me pumped up tonight. All right. So now, after it's all said and done, remember what I told you. I'm not trying to climb the charts. I'm trying to climb hearts. And... When a person has had an interaction with you, it's very important that you remember that I don't care how good you are in biology, I don't care how good you are in emergency medicine, I don't, it really doesn't matter if you just don't know how to do two simple things. Say hello and thank you. You know, respect. Really, hello and thank you is like respect. You know, and, and that way a person feels about you as a human and your character, that goes a long way with your brand. And the reason being is sometimes you're going to make mistakes because you're human. And it's those memories of people trusting your character that may allow you to take a hit with your brand. So we're not perfect. All of those good feelings that they have about you and the fact that they know your character will allow you to make a few mistakes with your brand and still uh, progress throughout your career, right? Chipotle, you said, took a hit to their brand, right? But because they built such a strong relationship with the customer, look, they're still making, you know, they're still doing very well, right? But that was because of the strong relationship. Now, mind you, when you don't have the character piece, there's some people who, once they make a mistake, people jump on them and they beat them down and they keep them down. They use it as an opportunity to not do business with them. When, when you care about someone and they make a mistake, you use that as an opportunity to forgive them, not to punish them even more. 
And that's really critical. I want you guys to remember your character really matters. All right. All right. So let's talk about some takeaways from tonight. So we got to develop our message. We got to find out who we are. Keep our resume updated and available. So um, it's funny that, um, that we talk about this at every conference I go to. Have your resume with you. Put your resume on your cell phone. Email it to yourself. Email it just in case you lose your hard copies. At most hotels, you can go downstairs and print off more. So just email yourself your resume. Keep it on your cell phone. Uh, develop and practice your elevator pitch. Be consistent across the platforms. Brand management isn't expensive. We debunked that myth tonight. Develop your website, create your business cards, and keep that LinkedIn profile updated, Miss Danielle. <laughs> oh my God. I want you to send me an email when you have it done. I'll hold you accountable. I'm actually in this class right now. It's a, like a biology career uh, class, and that's like this is the kind of thing that we're working on in this class. We're going to be doing like professional like sh uh, pictures and um, like the LinkedIn account and resumes and like practice applications for like if you're like pre med program then it's like your pre med applications or like internship applications. It's a really cool class. Wow. Tell the professor I want a, I want an invitation so I can come to Cal Oh no 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 that's Candace in Cal oh, I be I begged to come to California uh, early. <laughs> <laughs> but I still want to come to you too. I want to come to you too, Danielle. I'm just trying to piggyback a ride to the warm weather as it starts to get cold here on the East Coast. <laughs> All right, so before we um, we close out tonight, give me some um, what are you guys' thoughts about tonight? It's informative. Mm -hmm. Right. It, it seems so simple, but it's like those big hitters that you need to have down. Okay. Um, a couple things. Uh, I think we have your information. This is my information. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm very responsive. Um, I answer phone calls. I answer emails. Emails and stuff are the easiest. The, uh, social media stuff is cool, too. Um, if you need any help, that's really what this is about. Uh, LSMCE has really done a good job of putting together a platform that is here to help um, you know if you if you receive information and then you put that into application then you have an opportunity to really have some success so today we have received the information and now I just challenge you uh, to take some of this information you learn and, and apply it and um, we're gonna be doing this uh, I think our next our next call is on October 5th We'll be talking about uh, creating and presenting a scientific uh, poster and research. Uh, this is a very critical subject in you guys' uh, field. Um, so uh, invite friends. Uh, let them know that this crazy guy uh, is kind of cool. And uh, we're going to have many subjects, guys. We're going to um, – if you can fill out the survey, I know uh, LSMC sends out surveys. Fill those out because we – we're going to create the subjects based off of uh, the responses. Uh, last call, we got a lot of responses. So we do kind of have a top top 10 list of, of uh, mm -hmm. subject matters. But just while we're on the phone, are there any specific subjects that you're interested in that you want to know more about? Like topics that you could talk about? Absolutely. And, uh, and if there's something, and I'm just being transparent, I'm not here to um, – to, to try to put myself on a pedestal. If there's something that I don't feel comfortable giving you a, a really good uh, workshop on, we will get experts to come and support us. Maybe like on a workshop on a, like interview days. So a couple of us are applying to PhD programs this um, coming up cycle. I guess, uh, I guess how to make a good impression oh, during yeah. that interview. Absolutely. Now, now you're in my wheelhouse now. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, I think Deb, that was that was on our that was on the top of our list, right? 
Mm -hmm. uh, what other type of subjects? And think, and you know, when we think about the subjects, um, you know, be broad, be very broad. You know, um, one of the subjects that I actually didn't propose, but it's something we may want to talk about, is geographical flexibility. Um, a lot of people don't leave home. You know, I, I've been blessed. Um, some people don't call it blessed. I've been crazy enough to live in like nine, eight, what, eight different locations in the last ten years. Impressive. Moved all over. So that's a subject that. You know, a lot of people really don't even think about it. And when they move, it's not that easy. No. You know, especially when you've never left home. You right. Know? And then you're all kind of by yourself. Like, your friend group's not there anymore. Yeah. Families. You know, one of the things that I've struggled with is uh, I've been away from home uh, 14 years now. And um, I've, when I go home, my, my, my little cousin, you know, they're, they're big. You know, they're walking, they're talking, they're graduating. It's like, wow, I missed all of that. You know, and so the question I have to ask myself is, is it worth it? And I say yes, because every interaction I have with another person, tonight I got a chance to meet you. Now, who knows that if I changed anything in my, it's like the butterfly effect, right? If I would have changed anything, maybe tonight we don't come together and have this conversation. Right. And so now you receive some information tonight that could potentially change the whole trajectory of your future because you can implement some things that can that can uh, help you on your path of success. But if I changed anything in my past, we may not end up here together today. And so for me, when I when I really think about, well, wow, what if I would have stayed home and what if I would have seen all of these events with my family? Well, maybe I don't make an impact with you. And so uh, my objective in life is to impact the world. And as long as I'm impacting the world, I'm where I'm supposed to be. And but that's my mindset. And but other people who may be more strong family oriented, like they need the family environment and it works for them. So neither way is right or wrong. It's really what works for you. But that's a whole subject. That's a whole presentation. <laughs> But any other subjects, is there anything kind of pressing for you that you want to know about? Mm -hmm. so I think salary negotiation was one that we're going to talk about. Okay. We're going to talk about doing internships. Um, mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, so mm -hmm. just, I think the survey will come out. So just fill out the survey. Also, um, Oh, personally, if you have any feedback you want to give me on the delivery and information, don't hesitate. I think um, LSMC is going to send you some information out. Um, I'm open to, to critique, uh, and the more feedback we get, the better we make this for you. So I, I really appreciate your time. And uh, any parting shots for me? You guys need anything? Any questions? All right. Well, thank you so much. And uh, hope to talk to you on October 5th. Tell your friends about it, October 5th. October 5th, we're, all, um, we're welcoming the University of Illinois Chicago Bridge the Doctorate group as a special panel presenter for the uh, poster abstract anatomy and how to present at a um, research conference. So. All right. Well, take care and good luck in school. Knock them out. Thank you. All right.